Waging war on counterintelligence. This is Richard Land Live. Grab your phone and make a landline. 888-324-8456. That's 888-324-8456. Now back to more of Richard Land Live. Welcome back to Richard Land Live. We're visiting with Walter Hoya. And, Walter, welcome back. Um, tell us, what, what's, what's the name of your organization? The Issues for Life Foundation. Okay. And the website is Issues, Arabic number four, Life Issues, www.issues4, Arabic for light, uh, life dot org. That's correct. And um, we've had several folks call in who wanted to know the spelling of Ma'afa. Obviously, they want to go to that website. Now, Ma'afa is an African term for some kind of a profound emergency. Is that what it is? Uh, destruction. Destruction. Um, Walter, we were talking about the, 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 the fact that, that the abortion rate is so much higher in the African-American community than it is in either the Anglo or the Hispanic or the Asian community, that it has now dropped the birth rate down to 1.9 um, per mother, which is below the replacement rate, which is 2.1. Um, talk to us about the numbers. There's the sheer numbers involved. Uh, the numbers are staggering. Uh, c- consider uh, the National Vital Statistics report that uh, tells us for every one hundred live births in the African American community, there are seventy seven abortions. So we're looking almost at a one to one ratio. Mm. Uh, th- th- this same entity tells us that about forty three percent of all um, pregnancies in African American community end in abortion. So about half of our pregnancies are just destroyed uh, by abortion. According to the Allen Guttmacher Institute, uh, 30% of all abortions in the country uh, come from the African-American community, but you've got to understand that we are about 12% of the population. And so 12% of the population... So you're aborting, uh, you're aborting at about two and a half times your percentage of the population. Oh, easily. Wow. Easily. The, the Alan Guttmacher actually says that uh, African-American women are five times as likely to get an abortion than any other race Mm. now look you know to me this is such an anomaly walter because you have the african-american community you know when when they decide to remake the bishop's wife movie they set it in the in a black community because the black community is the only community in america where where the church was still considered to be the center of the neighborhood um, you know, it wouldn't have been credible to have the church be the center of the community in another in in the white community or in the Hispanic or the or the Asian community. And yet, this kind of thing goes on. Why is it that that African American pastors are not you know raising the roof over this? Why? Why? You know, Jesse Jackson used to be pro life. What happened? He sure did. Well. There are four reasons why African-American pastors don't engage uh, in this life issue in the pro-life community. And number one is that they're post-abort, Richard. Um, many of them uh, have an abortion in their life somewhere. They're a wife, a daughter, uh, maybe a family member, uh, you name it. There's an abortion in his life. And unless you can't deal with that issue, you can't reach him. Uh, two, uh, some of the fellas are just racist. Some of the fellas just hate white folk. And if you can't deal with them on that level, uh, you're not going to be able mm-hmm. to reach them. Uh, three, uh, some of the fellas are uh, compromised. They've chosen the money over the mission. They've uh, rather have the treasure over the truth. And because their jobs are at risk uh, when they preach this from the pulpit, uh, many of them have chosen just not to do it and remain silent uh, in order to maintain uh, their position. And then finally, four, uh, there are some brothers that are just uninformed. They really don't know uh, what's going on with abortion, the impact of the community. Uh, but that bothers me perhaps uh, the most. Life issue is the number one issue in the country. And if we as shepherds aren't sensitive to that, I really don't understand why we have that position. 
Well, you know, um, I was asking Ovita King about this, and you know, Jesse Jackson being a classic example, because Jesse is aware of this. I mean, he, he was aware early on. He, he was aware of the numbers, and he was aware of the past of the Planned Parenthood movement. But he got he got sort of seduced by the idea that they said, well, this is about women's rights. You know, and, and, and she said, you know, when you talk to an African-American, you're talking about giving, you know, expanding someone's rights or not not giving someone their rights, it's a powerful appeal. But it seems to me that that there's a direct analogy here with the civil rights movement. Um, when we were, when we passed the civil rights laws, yes, we, we took away the right of George Wallace and Lester Maddox to continue to practice their, their racism and their segregation against black people. And when we pass laws protecting an unborn baby, we are taking away a woman's right, a mother's right to kill her baby. Um, but we're defending the right of the unborn baby to live. Oh, is my logic no is my, is there something wrong with my logic there? No, no, no. There's no question about that. And and if we're gonna if we're gonna be honest with ourselves, uh, we have many laws in place that uh, check our behavior, uh, that allow us to remain civil with one another. So, Richard, your your logic is not in place. We are defending the right of that child uh, to be born, to have life. The child is a person. And per- persons are not property, and oftentimes abortion, well, abortion every time just treats a child as, as sheer uh, property, and we legalize the murder of innocent human beings. Mm. Well, is, 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 do you see progress in the, I mean, in the, in the general community, in the, in the majority community, we are, ne- we are seeing tremendous progress. We are seeing um for the first time since they started doing the polling, the majority of Americans describe themselves as pro-life. Um, are you seeing a similar shift in the African-American community? I am. There, there's a movement called personhood, and personhood is the only pro-life strategy that does not embrace exceptions. And when we start talking about persons that are not property, that rings really true in the heart of many of all African-American churches, because we all can uh, relate to being property and not being treated as persons. And when you relate it at that level, you can begin to see progress being made in terms of more and more of us uh, becoming more engaged in the pro-life movement. Well, you've certainly got a um, a task ahead of yourselves, ahead of yourself, and we want to partner with you. We want to partner to pray with you. Um, that this scourge uh, on the American society and on the African American community will be um, will be uh, eliminated in the near future. Uh, Walter, any any final words you'd have for our folks? I, I want uh, everyone to know that please do not underestimate the, the power of prayer. And then, two, I want everyone to know that abortion exists because Black America exists, and until black americans rise up stop having abortion abortion will just continue so uh partner with us in prayer uh partners with with us uh in, in other practical areas that are very much needed all right well and thank you stop done. thank you walter god bless you and thanks for being with us